Hello everybody, we are on part two of creating a space shooter with the Odin programming language and the STL2 library. To get started, go to the master branch on the GitHub repo, take a look at the guides, part two, render image. But if you're following along with the code, you want to check out tags, part two, render player. And that way you'll get the most up-to-date guide on the master branch, but the proper code on the proper tag. So open up your terminal, and once you've cloned the repo, git checkout part two render player, and that will give you the code you need to follow along. So in this one, we will be rendering an image. This is where we just get our character on the screen. We won't do anything more than that. So we just get familiar with a couple of new uh, functions from the SDL2 package. To render images with the core library, you can render BMP files, but you cannot render PNG files. So we need an extended library, SDL2 image. We import that right here, SDL2 image. SDL2, if you look on the GitHub repo for Odin, and I'll just open it right here. Here we go. You open up the Odin repo, you go to the vendor subfolder, STL2 subfolder, and you find image subfolder. So these names right here that we're importing just correspond to the names of the folder. It really is that simple. Odin makes importing very, very easy. I added a couple of new constants here to just give us a window width and a window height. Whereas before we had it built right into our create window function. Let's start at the beginning of our main and then we'll jump around a little bit if I show you some more details. After we initialize the SDL2 core library, this is where we initialize the image libra library. And like with the uh, SDL core library, we can uh, initialize it with some flags. And the only flag that I need right here is init PNG because most of the assets that we have right now are PNG. If we need a different type, you can just or them together and then it'll, uh, it'll be able to handle more than just that single type that we pass in right now. So we initialize the image and that's all we have to do. When we go down below here, after we're done creating our renderer, this is where we start creating our assets. Now, SDL image has a function called load texture. If you're doing 2D work and when you load an image, you don't have to do any fancy manipulation of the image, load texture is the uh, most efficient function to use according to the SDL um, Wikipedia, uh, the wiki. So we load our player PNG from the asset subfolder and we just verify that we actually have it, that there's not an error. We use the assert keyword from, or the assert function from Odin again. And then we have to start creating some funky stuff right here. I want to open up uh, the right side here and I will show you how we actually render an image on the screen. And that way the things on the left here will make more sense. Render copy is the function that we use to actually paint our image to the background scene that we're creating before we ultimately, down below here, render present. Remember, we're creating our scene in the background, and then when it's all finished, we present it at the end of our loop before clearing it again and starting our next frame. So render copy takes our renderer, of course, and then the player texture as the next argument. The player texture is what we created here. Moving back over to the right, this next argument, which we're not using right now, but you will later on, we just pass in nil. This is the source for our uh, the source for our image. So imagine the texture isn't just a single image like we have right now in this example, but rather a sprite sheet with multiple images. We have to tell SDL which part of that sprite sheet to take, and what this will be would be a um, a point or two, a reference to an SDL rect struct. Now we don't need that for source because we're using the full image by default so we don't have to do that. But the second one is also a rect. It is the destination rect. So the first rect is the source from a sprite sheet perhaps. We carve out a little section and then we tell SDL where to put it on the screen and that is our destination rect right here. So that's what we're doing on the left side now. We're creating our destination rect. It has four fields, an X, a Y, a width, and a height. So it basically gives us a rectangle, right? The X and Y are the, is the top left corner of the rect. Where do we want to put it on the screen? Well, I've just defaulted to 20X, so 20 
over towards the right from the far most left and then the window height divided by two going down so roughly halfway in the middle of the the window so that's what will where we'll place our image uh, by default now i don't have a height and a width right here because i don't really know how big my image is and rather than inspecting my image file and hard coding it i use query texture so i can query the texture and that will give me the width and the height i can uh, initialize well these two fields are initialized when I created the destination struct right here I just pass in a reference to those two and what SDL will do is it'll look at my player texture it'll read out the width and the height for the file for the image and it'll put it back into my destination struct and then I just overwrite the values I divided by 10 because the image we're using in this is actually quite large so I reduce it by 10 and that's what I set my width and my height to and then I create my game player entity. So this is the first time we're seeing our entity struct being used. I'll just go up to the top here to show you what that looks like. Entity, we store the texture in the entity. We only need one texture and then we can print it all over the place in different positions. As long as we create a new entity, right? We can reuse the same texture. So this is a pointer to the, to the texture. You remember in the last video, the little caret there means it's a pointer. And then we have our destination rect struct uh, stored on the entity as well so i create my player that way right there with those two fields and i store it all my game struct now the reason i do this is because the game struct is sort of like a global structure that will be available throughout the game uh, and i like to keep my player there just so it's accessible no matter which function i'm, I'm using it uh, i'm using to manipulate it so that's how i create my player now, when we begin our game loop, all of this should look familiar. We have our keyboard state, we pull for events. Now for the first time, we're rendering our image to the screen. We're not changing the position or anything like that. We're not handling any movement events that will be in the next video. For now, we're just rendering it on the screen. Nothing else has changed down below. So open up your terminal again. You just run it with Odin run and dot means it'll run with all the Odin files that are in that folder. And here we have our image. You can see it here on the on the left. You can play around with it a little bit. If you don't like the sizing that I've chosen for this, what you need to do is just go up to the top where we create it. Instead of reducing it by 10, let's just reduce it by, by 3. Recompile. And now you can see the image is quite a bit larger. You can also uh, change the positioning. If you don't want to start it at um, 20 over to the right, you can start it by move it over to 50. Maybe you want it at the very top of the screen instead of, you know, halfway down. So maybe just 10 pixels down from the top. And you'll see how all that changes, right? So play around with that a little bit. Get a little more familiar with how this is structured. If you'd like, you can even uh, print new things to the screen and, and move a bunch of them around. Uh, in preparation for the next video, we'll go back to our guide. Uh, we have some, uh, let's see some links here there we are at the top i highly recommend you take a look at some of this documentation and see if anything looks interesting that you can play around with and in prep for the next video see if you can figure out how to handle movement um, that'll be fun we'll cover that next but see if you can figure it out ahead of time and then you can compare how uh, your approach to what i've done they may be equally good uh, there's lots of different ways to do it uh, but you can uh, that that's a worthwhile exercise figuring it out on your own so thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, definitely put them down in the comments down below. Uh, be sure to subscribe so that you can catch the updates as we work through this series. Thanks.